Hello my fellow gamers, this is Days, and today we've got some intel from an interview with Miyazaki-san by Game Informer, which will be linked in the description if you wanted to read it. But then ask yourself, why are you searching on YouTube instead of Google if you wanted to read in the first place? That aside, President From Software and Director of Dark Souls 3 has recently revealed some new details about the game regarding magic, multiplayer, and warping or fast travel. Miyazaki-san specified during the interview that warping will be available from the beginning, similar to how it worked in Dark Souls 2. He also said that players will be able to reallocate their stats in order to enable the player to experiment with different builds at convenience. Now, I honestly don't mind this change. I remember altering my stats in Dark Souls 2 to match up with a decent X build, but how about warping from the start thing? I, I don't know, I don't quite know how I feel about this, and that mere uncertainty means that I don't really agree with it. Obviously I have no authority to change the game by saying this in this video, but I'm just stating my opinion. I honestly liked how we had to earn the ability to warp in Dark Souls 1, and before gaining the power to warp, we would really think about what's about to happen if we wander too deep into the world. We we rethink it. We, we think twice before actually entering an area uh, because we simply don't have the means to just teleport back. Unable to fast travel out of a certain area, it gave the game its own sense of depth in my opinion and we had to think about the in-game consequences if we travel too deep in an area we may not be ready for yet. Now Miyazaki may have made this decision in order to encourage players to actually go ahead and explore without worrying too much about consequences. All I can say is that I just hope that the originality that we felt in Dark Souls is re-experienced in Dark Souls 3, and allowing warping right as you begin the game detracts from the novelty of Dark Souls. Now I'm sure if it did happen after all, we'd all forget about it as we explore a brilliant, fresh Souls game. I'm just being detailed with my opinion here. Moving on to multiplayer, summoning and invading will remain the way it was in Dark Souls and Dark Souls 2, but it won't be limited to consumables like the cracked red eye orbs for example. In Dark Souls 2, having to buy these orbs over and over again was quite annoying. Unlike Dark Souls 2, in Dark Souls 1, we could just obtain the covenant item which allowed us to invade infinitely, and that's just gonna come back, and we did have to, uh, Get a, get, get a certain rank in Dark Souls 1 in order to get that item. Uh, if I see that in Dark Souls 3, I, I won't be surprised. Now the big brilliant change with magic is that magic is no longer limited to a specific amount of spells that force you to rest at the bonfire and replenish them. In other words, magic is now dependent on your mana bar, or MP bar. Just like in Demon Souls, I'm quoting Miyazaki here. By changing the magic management system to an MP scheme, options and freedom of the utilization should increase. This way, we can better clarify the differences in managing items and magic. There you go. I'm speculating that we'll have a stat that enhances mana bar and allows you to use more magic combos or like uh, consume less mana when uh, using uh, a certain uh, what's it called when using a certain spell but what I'm not sure of is that whether mana will just replenish on its own by time or whether it's gonna take consumables to replenish having consumables there uh, is not a bad idea but having too much access to those consumables that replenish mana could could be you know a little spammy you know you'd, you'd see people just popping those consumables and spamming uh, magic but uh, having an item that speeds up the replenishment of mana that's that's what I'd like to see maybe have consumables but make it rare now I suppose uh, the mana bar that allows us to use magic I can already foresee people making the true pure magic build that we've always wanted in Souls. On top of that, he also added that 
the magic in Dark Souls 3 will be more than just the same type of spells with different attributes, but instead feature specific characteristics that can enhance the player's playstyles and strategies. What he means by this has got to be the following. For instance, take Soul Arrow. Soul Arrow, Great Soul Arrow, all the way up to the most powerful spell, which is Crystal Soul Spear, they are all casted the same way the very first and basic Soul Arrow spell is casted. Which wasn't a bad thing for Dark Souls, but now in Dark Souls 3, we're gonna be getting different forms, natures, and ways to use these spells. Each spell should be different to the point where it inspires new strategies and tactics to use this magic. This is so much fuel for the hype train if you really think about what mysterious magic we're going to discover. An absolutely incredible and fresh improvement, and I can't, I, and I couldn't agree more with this. This will create the diversity in magic different from the routine way of doing magic which we've already burnt out during the first two Dark Souls games. With the mana bar and this magic diversity, a lot of people are going to be extremely pleased. Next up we've got weapon durability. It is mentioned that the Dark Souls 3 team is trying to find the optimal weapon durability point between Dark Souls and Dark Souls 2. That's all there is for this matter. Finally, illusory walls will of course make a return. Quite expected of a Souls game. These illusory walls will hide everything, from treasure chests to whole rooms or entire levels. Just remember your first reaction when you first found out about the Great Hollow. To quote what he said at the end, I like to have coincidences happen during battles or accidental reveals due to swinging weapons around or randomly shooting arrows. I want to implement this sort of surprise discovery in a natural way when playing the game. He couldn't have said it better. And if he did, I wouldn't be surprised because it's Miyazaki. And he is about to drop a bomb on us. And that bomb is Dark Souls 3. And I can't wait to blow that shit open. Period. <laughs>